this is a tough day. Uh, not just that it's hot, but because we are all missing Miriam. Uh, even though we know that she is not suffering right now, even though we know that the last few steps of her journey included a lot of pain, uh, we still miss her. There is a gap in the universe. There's a hole in our hearts. There is a space that feels very empty. At the edge of this abyss, Christians for thousands of years have had the message of hope, of resurrection. We believe that in the light of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, that Jesus will make good on his promise that even today, in this moment, that Miriam is in paradise. And it is in the light of that hope that we do our work of grief, where we mourn our loss for Miriam. And I invite you to do this work of grief a little bit every day. Some days it'll be bad, other days it'll be worse, and maybe some days it might not be or feel as bad. But I invite you to do your work of grief however it may look like or feel like. Otherwise, the grief just explodes and comes out in those emotional days or those stressful moments. And I'm sure that is not the way Miriam would want to be remembered. So I invite you to just be aware of the love given or received by Miriam and do what you can this day, this week, to honor her memory, to make real uh, the love that she gave and received. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Miriam. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Ted and family in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is a reading from the book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, for I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are so many dwelling places. If there were not so, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I would come again and will take you myself. So there, where I am, there you may be also. On behalf of my wife Betty and I, we are here today to say farewell to, to, say farewell to our beloved mom, Miriam Smith. My name is Arturo Lemos. My name is Arturo. I'm the son-in-law of Miriam Smith, but was also known to Miriam as her other son. It was, has been a blessing and an honor to have been a part of Miriam's life. She was more than the mother to me, mother-in-law to me. She was my mama. I want to thank her for filling that loving motherly void after losing my mother 40 years ago. A feeling I haven't felt in a very long time. Miriam's life, Miriam's life had changed when she met my dad, Ted. And it is certain that she lived an extraordinary life with my dad, Ted. As she traveled around the world with her beloved husband, exploring life in every way, they were inseparable. And most of all, they were a true love story. Betty and her mother shared an unconditional loving bond, which is far beyond recognition. Her mother, her mother was Betty's best friend, advisor, and confidant. Her greatest quality was to encourage Betty to make the best of everything. Mom had always been Betty's and the entire family's support and strength and comfort. Mom was warm, compassionate, and a spiritual woman who always went out of her way to pray for and help others, no matter what. Hope will keep us comfort, knowing that one day we'll be together again, holding hands and walking in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mom, for your kindness, words of wisdom, and unconditional love. You will always be in our hearts and our, our dreams for as long as we live. We love you, Mom. And to our dad, Ted, we will always be here for you. You are our family. We love you, Dad. Thank you. I'm going to be reading something from my uncle Armando Aleman, who unfortunately um, couldn't be here today. It says, Mima, I want to thank you for being my sisters, for being there for me and my sister. Thank you for the sacrifices you made for us. I could have never be sorry enough that I wasn't there to comfort and hold your hands when you were most needed with me. What you did for us was so loving and courageous and you protected us and sacrificed the best of your life in order to give us a better one. This can never be forgotten by any of us. Mima, you will always be the strongest woman I have ever met and it is because of you I am the man I am today. The God-fearing woman you were encouraged me time and time again to see God first and to never give up on him. I, wanna, I want you to know that I have kept my word, Mima. I continue daily to seek him and to fight the good fight of faith, the way you taught us how. And because of your example, I have victory in Jesus. <sighs> Mima, I will never say goodbye because I know that I will see you later. Sometime real soon, we will be together again so I can laugh at how feisty and ordinary you got when the vending machine at our visit stole the quarter from you. And you had everyone here shaking in their boots. You were such a powerful little fireball, my fireball. Mima, letting you go is painful, 
The Bible tells us even Jesus shed tears when his good friend Lazarus died. But because of God's promise, we have hope beyond physical death. And Psalms 116, 15 says that God's faithful servants, those who belong to him are precious in his sight. Though they die, they will live again. I know you are happy now, Mima, enjoying the presence of God with Grandma and Uncle Bethel. I have comfort in knowing we will be in God's presence forever. I miss you, Mima, and will always love you. Your son, Armando. I would like if you guys could join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts that are breaking. We come before you feeling loneliness and grief over our loss. Help us remember to reach out to you for comfort during this time. Remind us to include you in our grieving process. May you feel your strength coming to support us in our weakness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming today. My name is Elizabeth Campos. It's a beautiful yet hot day outside, isn't it? It's an honor to have us all here together and remembering the wonderful life of my abuela, which means grandma in Spanish. My abuela was born in Havana, Cuba on September 17, 1938. As Maria Josefa Miriam Iglesias Vasquez, which many may have you called her Miriam. She had one brother, Luis Betel Iglesias. And her parents were my great grandparents, Maria Josefa Vasquez, everyone knew her as Fefa, and my great grandfather, Luis Santos Iglesias. She had four kids in the order of Armando, Lazarito, who sadly passed away a day after his birth, Beatriz, which is my mom, Betty, and Ariadna, her daughter. My grandmother arrived in the United States in 1971 to be later married to this wonderful man right here, Edward Smith, which is my grandpa Ted, on September 27, 1980. And he became a mother to his daughter, his Karen and Suzanne. My grandmother had a total of 11 grandchildren, including myself and 12 great-grandchildren with a newborn on the way, making it 13. In 1979, she met my grandpa, Ted. She was a factory worker and he was an engineer. She didn't know a word of English and he didn't know a word of Spanish, but they fell in love with each other. And that right there shows that love can conquer anything. From the day they met to the day of her passing, this was true, a love story one we all wish we could have. <sighs> she received awards for dancing when she lived in Cuba. She loved to dance, she loved music, but she hated eggs with a passion. She loved watching Dancing with the Stars, America's Got Talent, Law and Order, and many more. What can I say? She was a true ideal meaning of a grandmother and a mother. She loved her family unconditionally, took in two young ladies as if they were her own. She always listened to you, whether you were calling her for advice or you needed someone to talk to. She loved God so much and prayed for every single one of us every night before she went to bed. She was a true Christian. She would always come to my house and bring the kids pistachio pudding, sponges to wash my dishes, toothpaste, cheeseburgers. She was a cute little grandma with her backpack that she would carry all the time. <laughs> she was never angry. Well, sometimes. <laughs> she was not the woman to get upset, that's for sure. You know, there's so many times I would call her when my mom wasn't available because my grandma was like a mom to me. Ever since I was a kid, I always had advice about boys, my health, medications, vitamins, and after I had my first set of twins, Jasmine and Jacob, I became very anemic. She helped me with certain foods. She even took me to the pharmacy to buy me iron pills because I didn't have money at the time. 
We talked about my kids. We talked about food. She showed us recipes, how to make certain things. But there was always that one time I would get in trouble with her. <laughs> she scared me. <laughs> and I feared her so much. Whenever I got an argument with my mom, she would call me and tell me, don't you ever disrespect my daughter or I'll go to your house. And she wasn't lying. She pulled up to my garage like a feisty little Cuban. <laughs> and she would put fear in me to where I put my head down to her. And I apologized because I didn't want to see her upset. And I apologized to my mom thereafter. All of us who know her know she has done something special for each one of us that we'll never forget. From simple picking and taking two daughters in and claiming them as her own, to picking some of us up from school, taking us to McDonald's, sitting there eating with us. She gave us rights to doctor appointments, she came over to everyone's house to visit them. She even considered my stepdad Arturo as her son. She was independent, sexy, sassy, but a very classy woman. She influenced me a lot, and I would tell her my goals in life, what I wanted to do. Between going to school, becoming something better for my kids, she always pushed me to do what's best. And one thing I love about her is that she never doubted me. Another thing I learned from my grandma is to never hate. She didn't like that word. She said, God doesn't like when people hate. I like to share a passage from the Dalai Lama. He said, there are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday, one is called tomorrow. So today is the right day to love, believe, and do mostly live. Abuela. I love, I know you're still here with us, and I want to tell you that I love you so much. You are more to me than my grandma. You are my mom. You have done so much for me and my kids, both you and Grandpa Ted. There were times where I was without food, without cars, but you both helped me in such tragic moments in my life, and I don't know how I can ever repay you both for the things you've done for me. But I promise you this, that I will take care of Grandpa. And I will be the best daughter to my mom, the best mother to my kids, and the best granddaughter you always were so proud of. Thank you for your sacrifices, your caring heart, your concerns, and your love, and everything you've done for us. I know you're in a much better place. And I will forever be grateful and thankful that you are my grandma. Rest in paradise, abuela. We love you so much. I'm going to miss you so, so much. Your granddaughter, Lisa. For our sister, Miriam, let us pray to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Miriam and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life, give to Miriam eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring Miriam to the joys of heaven. Miriam was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. And now we'll speak the Lord's Prayer, all of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the maker and creator of humankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The next prayer is called the Prayer of Commendation. While I say this prayer, I invite you to um, pray in your heart your own commendation to God for Miriam. The Prayer of Commendation is just that. It's when you commend or recommend to God the life of Miriam. So the way we do that is just remember all those good things that you remember in Miriam's life, all those special stories that uh, were shared today, all those that you remember yourself, uh, just all those moments of love. And I invite you to make a time this week, or perhaps, as was said, today, because there is no tomorrow or yesterday. But find a time today to mark that love. Do something concrete to honor Miriam. Uh, maybe watch an episode of Law & Order. Maybe find a way to dance. Uh, be a good daughter. Be a good mother. Be a good friend. Reach out and be loving to somebody in honor of Miriam. Let us commend Miriam to God. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Miriam. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a child of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And for this next prayer, uh, I'm going to proceed it with the blessing, with the uh, blessing of the cross and pillow, as well as uh, the casket. And I will be sprinkling um, those of us in the first few rows. Uh, nowadays, I think perhaps when we hear or feel water sprinkle upon us, it has another connotation of what the heck is that all about? But maybe it's not too bad to have that feeling of holy water uh, kind of remind us of, of um, perhaps being close to death. Because in a sense, uh, death we see not as an end, but as a change. And so maybe in these days of COVID, water sprinkling can be a much more, perhaps not a more powerful sign, but a richer sign that, that signifies both life, death, and resurrection. Ensure and in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our sister Miriam, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Father of all, we pray to you for Miriam and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Give to them eternal rest let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. La gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el amor de Dios y la comunión del Espíritu Santo sea con todos nosotros ahora y siempre. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.